from Sweet Snobber in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. D I T C H. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write out our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like is 101. Well, it's Like is 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. If baby want a steak, baby got to wait. Because I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya, lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Want to get laid? Got to be an oh. asshole. Spike, use Provolac, fix, switch, and pass, go hit it. Quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Poon. Got to knock out, but you're looking to switch. Pull a Hail Mary and jump that bitch. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Huh? Bye. Kiss 101. Bye. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Huh? Bye. Kiss 101. It's like is 101, the ongoing on air adult education class that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of like is 101. The basics here, of course, uh, if you are not looking to get laid, this is the wrong class for you. I'm not a marriage counselor. I've been divorced repeatedly. I, I don't pretend to be an expert in fixing your marriage. I'm not here to fix your relationship either because I don't endorse living with anybody. I don't endorse marrying anybody. So if you need that kind of help, write to Dear Abby or call uh, Dr. Turkey Neck or somebody like that. But please don't call here. I tell you right up front. I love the calls your professor gets with people saying, What are your credentials for this? What makes you think you've been divorced four times? What makes you think you can... Hey, here's how, okay? I, I, I talk about getting laid. Because when you're single, then married, then single, then married, then single, then married, then single, then married, then single, one thing you do as a man is you get laid a lot. I wouldn't pretend to know how to save your marriage. I wouldn't even suggest you try. Do you understand? My job here is to help men get married, avoid getting married, avoid relationships, avoid commitment. My job here is to help you get laid with the least amount of effort, least amount of energy, least amount of money spent or time wasted. That's why I'm here. Dating equals porking. The purpose of dating is to get laid. That's what I'm here to remind you. If you are not going out with the goal of getting laid, it is time to cancel that date. If you have a date coming up and you're not certain that your interest in that person is in seeing them naked, cancel it now. Dating equals porking. That is your primary goal in going out. We believe in the three strikes you're outlaw, not just in the state of California. We believe, believe it specifically in Ligus 101. If a woman does not put out in the first three dates, you kick her to the curb. You don't waste time on women who aren't going to give you what you want. We do not have sex with virgins. It's impossible to get rid of them. And the sex is always terrible. We don't have sex with single mothers. Single mothers already made at least one mistake. Who wants to be paying for any mistakes in the future? Single mothers are unlikely to have the abortion you need them to have. You have heard time and time again in this classroom. Men calling up saying, Tom, I got with a single mother. I thought I knew more than you did. 
I got with a single mother, and now she's locked up. Now I know what to do. Help me now. Why don't you save yourself the trouble? Just don't f a single mother. You already know what they will do when they get knocked up. They will have a baby. No single mothers. No spending more than forty dollars on a date. Zero is optimum. A woman decides before she gets to your house, before you get to her house, whether or not you're going to have sex with her. Showing up at a limo or buying her lobster or champagne or flowers is not going to change her decision. The more you buy for her, the more she'll feel pressure to put out, and the more she'll say no. You must act like you don't give a crap. You know why? Because you shouldn't give a crap. We don't give a rat's ass about these chicks, okay? We don't bring them to our house if we can avoid it. We have sex at their place. No saying I love you. No hugging. No spooning. No caressing. No sleeping over. We put our pants on after we towel off Big Jim and the twins. We get the hell out of there. We sleep in our own bed. Alone. How much easier can I make this for you? I'm making this really, really simple. Boys, you've got to start paying attention here because we're getting too many of these calls from 19-year-old boys with their 19-year-old girlfriends and their one-year-old daughters calling in here. You got to stop. No babies, no having babies, no agreeing to have babies, no impregnating people because they can't get pregnant. Yeah, Your sperm is a credit card with your signature on it. It's a blank check. Every time you give somebody your sperm, you're giving them permission to spend your money for up to two decades. A lot of you guys aren't even old enough to know how long two decades is. How would you like to spend the next 20 years of your life paying for something that, that, that gave you 30 seconds of pleasure? Jesus! I am here to keep you out of trouble. I am here to keep you getting laid while spending as little as possible, wasting as little time and energy as possible on these bitches who won't put out. If you've got questions about how to do this, this is where you bring them up. You bring your question to the floor. Ladies, if you disagree with your professor, we encourage a vigorous classroom debate and discussion. You are more than welcome to call in and tell your professor why you think he's wrong, and he will respond in kind. Now all you need to do is step up to the podium. Tom. Tom. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. My girlfriend's a habitual listener. She loves your show. Mm Mm-hmm. And I kind of wonder if she's starting to get a little worried about me listening to you as well. Why is that? You know, the stuff that you teach. She says all the guys that listen to your stuff are ass. Yes, we are. Thank you. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. Likas 101. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. All right. Let's go. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. What's going on? Just checking in. Doing okay, son. I, I got to give you props one more time, Dad. I am laughing so hard on your new intro for Like Us 101. You're killing me with that thing. It is hilarious. You mean the song? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We, we know where you got it from, and it's it's killer. It is killer. I, I think you ought to do a segment, a quick segment at some time. Just have all the haters call in on that song so we can laugh at it. <laughs> the uh, the, uh, the uh, guy who created that is named uh, Colin Kelly. Oh, it's hilarious. And you know, he, I, he is the original guy who did the Flat Buns commercial for Carl's Jr., and he's a listener. Oh, it's awesome. You know, I'm sure it's proprietary and all that, and I get it. I would love it if you guys could post it, like, on your website so we could download it. Uh, it's already on the website. 
Oh, it is? Oh, I got to check it out. It's, it is going on my phone. It's going on my email. The second any chick gives me any kind of lip, she's going to get an email with it attached with a simple one-liner. See ya. <laughs> Go to blowmeuptom.com. It's there. I am all over it. Once again, Dad, just wanted to give you props for good work one more time. Can you take me out old school? Of course I can. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number on Lycus 101. It's Chris. Hello. I'm Mike. Huh? Hello? Yes. Hey, it's Chris. I just said that. Oh, how are you doing? Great. So, uh... Hold on. Actually, I'm picking up my kid right now. Your kid? Your, uh, your kid? How old are you? No, I have a kid, uh, 24. Why'd you do that? Well, you know, mistakes, mistakes. Uh, the kid's the best thing that happened to me. Got to say right now, I do cut a check. Every paycheck is a cut-in check, almost a whole check. So you know what I did? I had to go to school. I had to apply myself. I had to make more money. So when that, that cut did come, it was not a big deal. I can still go out and do whatever the hell I want. When cutting the check and being a good father, I'm doing the same thing and keeping the woman very quiet while doing it. What happens if she finds out you make more money and goes back and asks for more child support? Oh, no, that's exactly what happened. She knows I make more money. But the woman, you have to keep the woman satisfied just enough where she knows that you don't make that much. And she still can say, oh, you're still a nice guy, right? Yeah, I'm a nice guy. I'm giving you child support, right, as much as I should be. Yeah, you are. You're still a really nice guy. So they're very, very quiet. Very quiet. You don't let them know that you applied yourself. You don't let them know that you went to school. You don't. Let how them can know you say that's the? Yourself. How can you say it's the best thing that ever happened to you? Well, I can't say it's the best thing, but my my son's the best thing that ever happened to me. The guy, but the you could awesome. have had a son ten awesome. years from now. Uh, I I totally know that a mistake happened. Uh, we actually said the a word. She wasn't totally cool with it. I was. Yeah, but it wasn't a mistake. It. Here's the thing: don't let yourself off so easy. It wasn't a mistake. Oh, it was. It, it, it was a mistake. So you had a condom and it didn't work. Uh, actually, you know, I did have a condom, I think, when I started. You were wearing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my point. <laughs> uh, it's not a mistake. If you're having but, sex, if the condom isn't on and you're having sex, it's not a mistake. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had it on. But the thing is, Tom, you said the same thing. It's the longest uh, the longest age of fraud going on. So I was a, a victim of fraud, and now I'm kind of a suspect. Why, she, uh, she put a hole in the condom? Uh, no, actually, you take it off halfway because uh, you believe what a woman says. Why do why? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you believe that? How long have you been a student here? Uh, I've been a student. You know what? Actually, I got I got to say this real quick. I used to go to this place called Supermex in uh, in OC, and we'd listen to you while we're in the parking lot. And I have. Uh, by the way, I love Supermex. I've been there many times. One of my oh, favorite Mexican you. joints in SoCal. But uh, we uh, we'd sit there. That's the best burrito in town. Yeah, we'd sit there, and there's people saying, "Oh, Tom Likas is a jerk. The guy doesn't know what he's talking about." And uh, one of my other friends, this is how I got caught in. One of my other friends has said. Uh, he's actually 35 and no kids and has a great life. I've been to his house, and it, it's, it's pretty much a bachelor pad. And uh, it's nothing like a 24-year-old 24, uh, 24 going to a 35-year-old guy guy's house and saying, hey, this is the lifestyle. You know, that doesn't happen uh, a lot. But anyway, he asked this guy, how many kids do you have? And he said, oh, I have three beautiful kids. And he said, okay, that's great. How old are you? He was 28. That's why you were a jerk. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that's when it kind of clicked. Where it said, hey, I have a son. Why don't I do this? I used to be a floor man. I used to make like $10 an hour, and then the, the whole uh, the whole paychecks were out the window. Just totally gone. So I said, hey, you know what? I have to go back to school. i got to do something so I have more money in my pocket. So this woman thought she had me because I had a kid. So she thought, hey, you have a kid. I can break up with you whenever I want. You need to give me a ring. You need to be nice to my parents. You need to be nice to me. And finally, I said, you know what? Screw that. I don't need to do that. So I left, and I, I sucked. But the paychecks came out a lot. So there's a lot of times I was eating top ramen and not going out on any dates. And that's when I hooked up with a girl, and I gave her the whole sob story. Hey, I have a son. Um, you know, I, I can't do anything. I have my son tonight. And finally, I found a chick that kind of felt like a guy, and she goes, hey, I'm not, I'm not looking for a relationship. I just, you know, I want to have some sex. If you want to do that, that's cool. Let's go out. And I told her, hey, I only have like 40 bucks to work with. She goes, oh, that's cool. We're on our way to this place called Margarita Beach in, uh, in San Bernardino. She ended up dropping about 60 bucks. I ended up getting tossed. She ended up getting tossed. And I still talk to her only when I'm thirsty and only when I'm very horny. Really? Well, that yeah. part is good. But, and, I mean, uh, you've got to wear condoms 100% of the time. You've got to. Oh, now I do. Um, I, I do now. And, and now 
um, even though you know I'm, I'm trying to save up the cash because my my health insurance doesn't cover it, but uh, I'm going to get a, a vasectomy as soon as I possibly can. And you know what? I'm not going to tell anybody about it. I'm not going to tell my parents. I'm not going to tell my best friends anything like that. But well, you especially shouldn't tell the chicks you're having sex with, because many of them would still like to get pregnant and have a baby with you. Oh no! But you know what? Now, now even having a kid, it's all a soft story, man. It's all just hey, yeah, I have a son. You know, this happened. Uh, I've been screwed over before. And by the time they found out that I've been screwed over, or that I make this much money, or say hey, I don't have money in my bank account, I've already slept with them. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I understand that part. I just would not want to have the percentage of my net income taken out by somebody I had sex with once. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it that you're funny, having taken out of your paycheck. It's outrageous. I mean, how much? What what percentage of your net income goes to this woman? Well, let me tell you this. Before uh, before I got my pay raise, I made thirty one thousand dollars a year, and I'd say a good what I could put in savings. I'd say about eighteen, nineteen grand was almost on a kid. That's not even you know covering child support, food. Formula when the baby wait, 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 19 grand to the kid? You made 31 gross or 31 net? 31 net. 31 net. So 19,000 out of 31,000 was going to the kid? Yes. After all said and done. That's well over half, but it's more like 60, 65% of your net income. Yep. I'll tell you what, I, I could never feel good about that. Yeah, I didn't feel good, but I got a pay raise, and now I can afford to do that. That's the thing. I can afford to take care of my son. As long as she doesn't take more of your money, which... Oh, yeah, uh, I totally I totally understand that, too. And that means you have to walk on eggshells around her, and you have to be nice to her, and you have to tiptoe around her. Yeah, according to what I'm paying, I only have to walk eggshells around her less than... This is somebody who... By the way, this is somebody who, by your own admission, lied to you. Uh Uh-huh. You have to be nice to somebody who, who hoodwinked you into having a baby. Right, but I, I would totally deal with that to do whatever the hell I want and have a kid. That you know that happened, totally fine. But I can totally deal with that to go out that night and be totally cool with it, and, and totally and and be fine waking up and not not knowing what girl's house what, what her name is. I'm totally cool with that. That was a paycheck. I can understand that. And uh, I have about maybe about 15 more years of doing that. And my dad was the first one to tell me, which is also a listener said, hey, yeah, attaboy, you only have to deal with this 18 more years. Unbelievable. Chris, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dan on Lagos 101. Hello. Tom, how are you doing? Great. Hey, man. Um, kind of a fairly new listener here, and I kind of hear basically uh, most of the rules there, but uh, I know the single mom rule is off limits. What about a married mom? Aren't you worried about what happens when you do something like that? Do you have so little game that that's what you're down to? No, no, here's the thing. If you have game, you shouldn't be doing it. Okay, well, it was, first of all, it was a one-time thing. I didn't find out she was a mom until after, and now she's like, she's the one coming to me, basically. I understand that. But what happens if her husband checks her cell phone bill and finds you? That's what I want to know. I'm asking you. Who knows? That's why, you know, I I can definitely say no. I mean, I've been basically saying no, putting her off, because I don't know what to do here. I don't want that to happen. Are you aware there are ways that people can, can, if they have your cell phone number, they can find you? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. And I bet you this is probably... And you realize she has a cell phone. She's been talking to you on it. Yep. A lot. Yep. And he has a bill. And if he doesn't get the bill, there's a website for his cell phone company where he can check his phone bill. Right. Right? So let's say he goes to the website and he sees your number coming up over and over and over. For about 15 bucks, he can go to one of these uh, detective sites... And that phone number traces right back to you. Right. And so what happens if this guy shows up at your place? Then what? Right. Don't you care about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. So forget that crap. I mean, don't you think about this stuff? I do, yeah. But, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely not worth it. You're right. I mean, that could happen to you. Well, it's not going to now. You didn't think about it? I did, but, you know, it's, that's why I'm calling you, man. I mean, you have to think about those things. You have to think before you do this stuff. Yep. 
I believe me, I'm no prude. This has nothing to do with morality or the Ten Commandments or religion or anything. I've had fun every which way. I've even done what you did. But I've gotten caught, too. Oh. And I know how it is. Yeah, I don't want to get caught. Know what it's like? You know, you're calling your voicemail, and, and you're, you're checking your voicemail. It's like, uh, hey, Tom, this is Dave. You know, the wealth husband, the one you've been banging. I got your number, Tom, and I know where you are. How would you like to be getting that call? Nope. I got that call. What happened? Fortunately, uh, I was able to uh, evade that one, but that's only because I lived a thousand miles away from Dave. Uh, if I lived in the same city, I don't think I would have gotten a wink of sleep at night. Yeah. You live in the phone. same city as this guy, this chick's husband. Uh, yeah, they do. Same city. Same metropolitan area. He could yeah, easily okay. just stop by and pay you a visit. If you got game, how about you stick to chicks who are available? I will. This is just one that, I, you know, she wants to hook up. She wants to hook up, wants to hook up. And I don't I'm care what she up. wants. Who cares what she wants? All right. Tell her to get a note from her husband. <laughs> All right, man, you cleared my problem up. Doesn't matter what she wants. It's what you want. Right? Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's Lycus 101, and I am your professor. This is Andrea on the Tom Lycus Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I just wanted to call and say I agree with you 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah? Yeah, there's 1% I don't agree on. Well, that's impossible because if you agree with me 99.9% .9 of the time, what's that, what's that, like, that only leaves 0.1%. What is that? I don't know. I'm not that good at math. I'm helping you here. Okay. That one little whatever that's left is where I don't agree. And I just feel that if men stop BSing women and just offer them some cash, a lot more women would put out. Darling, if I'm going to offer someone cash, it's going to be to a professional. I know. Not, not to your average slimy slime ball who's out there just trying to get another piece of jewelry or whatever. Well, I mean, every man is just trying to get some some ass, right? Every guy out there just, just wants ass. Why can't a girl get what she can? Well, she can try to do that, but there's plenty of women who give it away for free. I understand. And the I trick totally is understand. to identify those women and get it from them. Oh, okay. I get it. And then if we uh, need somebody who's like a 10 plus, 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 uh, and, and we're going to pay a professional, we're not going to uh, be paying some six or seven uh, in the parking lot of the El Torito. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it depends what they look like, too. No, it, it, uh, well, I said a six or a seven. Oh, okay. And by the way, there's not a lot of tens out there who are going around saying, yeah, for $200, they'll do you. There's not a lot of those around. Uh, because women think that's awful, terrible. They, they, they're they perfectly happy to have you buy them a $300 dinner or a $150 bottle of champagne. Uh, they're perfectly happy. Why, why waste all that time and energy when you could just give it to them? Because and... most chicks will, will not do a quid pro quo. They won't. Okay, I guess I'm not most chicks. Are you are are you a hooker? Um, call it whatever you want, but I have sex for money. All right, that's that's a prostitute. Oh, <laughs> call it whatever you want. That's what it is. Okay, that's so the dictionary it's definition. That. It's not an insult. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you're a prostitute. Most women don't want to think of themselves as prostitutes, even though they are, in reality, prostitutes. Exactly. Yeah. They don't want to think of themselves that way. They want to think there's the possibility they're going to fall in love with you, or you're going to fall in love with them. They want to think you care about them. They want to go through the whole whining and dining ritual. If you handed the average woman $200 and said, let's skip dinner, they, they would slap you or just run away. Uh, I doubt it. I mean, maybe you guys should try it. You really think that? 
I really do think that. I mean, if I wasn't a prostitute, which, you know, I am, but, I mean, I used to do this for free until I figured out, until I got a little bit older and I figured out, wow, I can get paid for what I do for fun. And that's how it all started. Yeah, dear, but, but do you think most women are like you? I think a lot of women are sluts. I think a lot of women are sluts, but sluts are not whores. Sluts do it for free. Exactly. I mean, there, and there's an extra perk. You're getting paid, so why not be a whore? A whore is a slut who wants money. Okay, what's wrong with that? I didn't say there's anything wrong with it, as long as you're honest about what you are. Yeah. I mean, I prefer prostitutes, frankly, because at least they tell you right up front what they are. Uh, your average woman is a prostitute, but uh, she she won't admit to it. She's an amateur. Uh, so rather than saying, give me $200, she'll be happy to have me come over and fill my tank with gas and pick her up and then take her to a restaurant and get her a $47 Chateaubriand. And then she'll be perfectly happy to have me order a $60 bottle of wine. And then she'll be perfectly happy if I take her back to her place, maybe for an after-dinner drink somewhere. And when the bill gets over $200, she'll be more than happy to uh, maybe kiss me and then hint that maybe next time she'll let me uh, grope her a little bit. How and much time did you invest in that? Well, I'm... Look, darling, a few hours. Darling, uh, what I'm trying to tell these guys is how to get sex without wasting all that time, money, and energy. That's what the purpose of this course. No, and I totally agree with you most of the time. You're so good. Because most women, not you, but most women will give you what you want, and you can get it without having to give them anything. Right. I need to get me a show like you, Tom, to tell these women what's up. <laughs> You know, those radio stations, you can probably buy an hour of time, just go on there and sell your services. Yeah, not a bad idea. You know, one of those infomercial shows where you could just say, why don't you call my office? Here's my number. It'd yeah, be, or like a class, you know, like Hoeing 101. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you have a pimp or do you operate uh, directly? Um, I work for an agency. It's uh, a girl. Uh, is that, that what they're calling them nowadays, agencies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm, you know, I'm independent. I just meet guys all the time. I mean, at the gas station, anywhere, clubs, I mean, guys. And I just tell them, don't so waste your time. When you meet a guy, all right, all right, there you are. You're at the Chevron station. Uh -huh. How do you hook up with a guy for money at a Chevron station? I'm pumping gas, and a guy just says, hey, you know, I smile, and they say hi, and we talk. And then I just, they ask for my number, and I tell them, well, I'm a business person. You know, don't waste my, don't call me unless. You got some money to spend. I know what you want for me, and let me, you know, I want money from you. And how long does it take to hook that transaction up? Are they call right away? Do they go home with you right away? What do they do? Um, no, they call and set up an appointment. And they do it through the agency or directly with you? No, through me. It depends if I meet them or because the people, the agency. I don't. I've never spoke to these people before. I just show up, do my job, and leave. And um, the people I meet, well, they meet with directly with me. I see. And do they have you listed in a catalog or something? Uh, your photo? Yeah. yeah. Like a, a reporter and stuff, a local. Not a newspaper, but a newspaper that. Like one of those. You know what's going on. Or the newspaper. Yellow Pages and Craigslist. You know, they have all kinds of ads. There you go. And your, is your photo on Craigslist? No, I don't have an, a photo out. No photo. No photo, but I mean. Every every person I see usually sees me again. So you get a lot of repeat business. Yes, I do. Look at that. And where do you take these boys? Um, I go to hotels, houses on the hill. I mean, most of the time it's older, wealthier, sometimes married men. Right. So you do alcohol. Yes. Very nice. I live alone also. Like so, when I meet my the guys, I. I meet at bars or clubs. I, and, I have my own place also. Do you have a boyfriend? Um, I don't want to get into that. I have a loser boyfriend in jail, but... Of course you do. Story. Of course you do. Isn't that pretty much the way? What was that? Isn't that pretty much the way it is? Yeah. Most of the time. The it's person I want to be with, I can't be with. It's kind of the, kind of the stereotype. Yes, I love it. But it was great talking to you, Tom. I've been a long time listener, and 
my first time caller, and uh, I I like what you say. Well, thank you so much, dear. Okay, can you take me out, Kobe style? Of course I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 Time. Kiss. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If your boyfriend makes $28,000 a year, you are hideous. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, Likas 101, America's on-air Adult education course to teach you how to get laid for less. That's right. And if there are women out there wanting to know, men think this is the course to take as well. Uh, to participate in our class, you call 1 800 5 800 Tom. This is Priscilla on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I want to tell you two things. You're my hero, first of all. And second, if you can be my master and I can be your tortured princess. Is that so? <laughs> yes. I want to know if you torture people. Only upon request. I recently got into that stuff. I'm not sure why exactly, but I like to get humiliated. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> As you might guess. Awesome. What do you look like, darling? I am 5'2". Um, I weigh 105, and I have nice boobs and a nice ass. I mean, a nice butt. I'm sorry. And I'm pretty... Uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay. I'm average. Average? I'm average, yeah. So you're a 5. Yeah. I'm, I'm a 5. Wait, what? Average would be a 5. A scale of 1 to 10. Ten being the best, one being the worst, five would be average. Yeah, okay, then I'm a five. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I have trouble getting laid for some reason. It, I, maybe I, it's because you're a five. Oh, I see. And I want to meet a master. I want somebody to torture me. And I have trouble finding that as well. Well, nobody is better at humiliation than I am. I'm a professional. Okay, so humiliate me. Well, darling, I, it doesn't work that way. Uh, pretty much I have to be inspired. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm so nervous right now. I've never, I've never been on the air before. That's what they all say. Oh. Don't worry, it won't hurt. <laughs> um, well, give me something to work with here. Something to work with? Darling, we're on the air. <laughs> I mean, most of the people who I humiliate call up and say something really nasty to me. They insult the master, and then the master has to come down like a ton of bricks. Wow, that's pretty intense. I, I don't know if I, if I want you to be my master now. No, uh, see that? Because <laughs> I'm no. a professional. Okay, so help me. How how do I find these men like that like to torture girls like me? Men who like average. to torture girls like you? Yeah, that are average. That are a five. How do I go about looking for them? Is is there a certain look that they have? How do you know if somebody's into that? Stuff? I think they dress a certain way. Anyone who's got one of those goth outfits on, pretty much you can uh, you can guarantee that's what they're into. Okay, and where, where do there you are bars in Hollywood like that? Where where like should I go? Hollywood Boulevard. There are some bars like that. Really, I'm going to go to Miss Kitty's tomorrow. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but most of the people that go there are pretty gay. You don't want somebody who's gay unless you were into being a lesbian. Right. I actually made out with a girl on Monday. How was that? Um, I I didn't like it. I was really surprised because I, I was actually looking forward to my first gay experience. And it wasn't that great. 
You needed a man jamming his tongue into your mouth. Oh, most definitely. I think I realize that I like men. Well, that's why you experiment sometimes. And this girl was pretty aggressive. Really aggressive, and I was just not even into it at all. Yeah, but a man could crack your ass. Oh, yeah, for sure. But the right kind of man. What kind is that? Um, somebody who knows what they're doing. Because most of these boys my age, they don't really know. They only know what turns them on. And they're not in tune with, you know, the feminine power of a woman. Mm, how old's your dad? My dad? Um, I don't actually have one. Well, you do. You just don't know where he is. Right. How old is he? He's probably around, I want to say, 56, 57. Well, maybe somebody your dad's age. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been with anybody that old. Step it up, dear. Really? Yeah. But I'm average, so guys don't really approach me that often. Darling, you need to go to the kinds of bars and places where they hang out. Like I say, in Hollywood, there's more than one bar like that. I'm not talking about West Hollywood. I'm talking about Hollywood proper. Right, right. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do my best to get laid this weekend. Hopefully it works out for me. All right, let it, wait. Hang on a second. Jose, what did you want to say to Priscilla? Um. Yes. How are you? Good. Uh, here's you need somebody out of the bullpen, Tom. <laughs> Well, what does that mean that exactly? Up. Hey, I'm. Hey, you, you said you had trouble looking for a man, right? Hey, I'm just here to hit it and quit it. Uh, see, with that kind of a comment, like, I don't think you can work for me. Mm, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, what did you want to say to Priscilla? Oh, uh, well, I've been, uh, I've been with girls like this before. Actually, only once. Uh, I'm wondering how down for this stuff she really is. I, I was with a girl that used to... Like me, like, slapping her and stuff during sex. And if that's what she's looking for, I totally handle that. Um, I, like, I like to get choked, slapped. <laughs> I've done all that. Hey, we can't say that. We can't say oh, that yeah, word sorry. on the air. I've, I've, I've got no, I don't even get into the concept here. We can't. We, that's pushing. How old are you? I'm 25. Okay, that's not bad. And th this is you're just now getting into this stuff? No, yeah, just recently, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because uh, what, what city do you live in? I live in Long Beach. Oh, okay. I'm in the, the 909 area, and I was with a girl for like probably like six months, and all the relationship was based on was her calling me up, wanting to go over there and slap her around and hit it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it was all about. Nothing more. And it was fun. Really fun. Priscilla would like to be slapped around right about now, I think. <laughs> Chris, what do you want to say to Priscilla? What's up, Priscilla? I don't know who that guy was, but you need to be put in your place, girl. I'll take care of you real good. Treat you like like the bad girl you need to be treated like and humiliate you like you wouldn't believe. That sounds and actually I'll, pretty tempting. <laughs> I'll just spit in your mouth to start, and you just go from there. You'll be asking for more and begging to stop, but wanting more. Oh, I got spit in my face. A few nights ago, and that was pretty awesome. Hot, yeah? You like that, huh? <laughs> yeah. So what? Okay, we got I, lots, I think... of, lots of toys over here. We can we can tie you up and punish you good, girl. That sounds really dirty and bad, and that's really up my alley. In all the right ways. Up your alley have, is uh, where he wants to go. What? Have uh, uh, the boys set us up. Tommy, set us up. Now, Priscilla, is that what you want? Um, yeah, I don't see why not. All right, hold on. Another satisfied customer. The Tom Likas Show. Your romantic headquarters. <laughs> uh, all right, we have another hour of Likas 101 to go here. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's 1-800-5800-866. Priscilla, no, no more calls about Priscilla. She's already been taken care of. Unbelievable. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at 
blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.